Hi, I'm Paul, and I'd like to spend a few minutes talking with you about industrial Ethernet gateways. You know, industrial Ethernet's fixed a lot of the connectivity issues uh, uh, with industrial equipment, uh, but there are times in which you'd like to get some different devices to talk, and it's not as easy to do when they speak different protocols. Um, take, for example, a real common application we see where um, you've got a, a, a variable frequency drive, a VFD, uh, that perhaps talks Modbus, and you'd like to get that uh, to communicate with your uh, Control Logics PLC, the Tox Ethernet IP. Well, you know, there's a couple options for you. One option might be to use um, uh, a serial port and write the application code in your PLC with which to do that. Or you might even consider using a uh, separate HMI and uh, writing application software in the HMI to bridge the different communication protocols. But those all take extra time and extra effort and additional expense on that. And you might consider using an industrial Ethernet gateway. Um, that looks something like this unit here that's a small dedicated device that's self-contained and has application programs to make this really easy for you. In the case of the VFD, you've got a serial port here that connects to your VFD, and then you've got Ethernet here that connects to your control logics or uh, whatever PLC you may be using in this application. The um, basic operation of this is, is to maintain an internal image of the data within your VFD. So uh, in this Modbus connection, it's pulling data from the VFD, storing an internal memory, and then when the request comes over Ethernet IP to grab that data, uh, that's made available um, separately over Ethernet. Now, this is the MK5105, and it has a couple of unique features on it. Uh, we talked about the serial interface and Ethernet. You may notice there are two Ethernet ports here. That can be used in applications when you may want to interface via Modbus TCP to the second device instead of serial. Or more commonly, a lot of people like to use this for bridging uh, multiple devices. It's a built-in switch, meaning you can have a drop into the panel for one connection and then have your PLC on Ethernet for the second connection. There's also a dedicated setup port for a console. Uh, redundant power in here comes in as well as a fault relay for fault status. And lastly, a little hard to see, there's a micro SD card slot that allows you to back up your configuration. So if there's ever a need to do remove and replace of it, you can quickly set this up in a matter of minutes. So let's just take a minute here and see how easy this is to set up. Now, there's a couple options to setting up your M-Gate. Uh, the first option is using the Windows software we provide. It's also available from our website. We call that M-Gate Manager. Um, another option that's my personal favorite is just utilizing a web browser since the M-Gate has a built-in web server. Um, so we've got a unit here that I've attached to from my laptop via Ethernet. And then taking a look at my, at my browser, you can see that in the main screen, you're presented with a few options after logging in. And there's really three things that you need to set. Those three things are setting your network address, setting your protocol conversion options, and then the specific settings for the devices you're working with. Um, in those settings, um, you'll find, first of all, the network settings here. We're utilizing the default options out of the box um, that makes it easy to use this without having to really do much uh, work here. Next, we're going to go into the protocol settings. When you expand this menu, menu you'll see you have several options here. Uh, let's start with the uh, protocol conversion type. Um, for this example, we're going to use Ethernet IP to Modbus. So let's make that first option and submit those, those changes. Um, since we've selected a serial connection for our VFD, we need to go in and set the serial port settings. In this case, we're going to select 9,600 bits per second. We'll keep even peri 8 data bits, one stop bit. Although we do want to change the interface to RS-485. So let's go ahead and make those changes active. Uh, once we've done that, we'll go ahead and define the values we want to look at from the PLC. So we'll click on Modbus RTU. And here we know that the M gate's going to be a master. We're going to add some registers to pull. Let's call this the VFD. And we're going to read some data out of the VFD. We're going to start from register 5, and let's just keep this for uh, reading 10 registers, and we'll submit these for a polling cycle. Now at the bottom of the screen, you can see here's what we're going to pull from this on a periodic data every uh, uh, 1,000 milliseconds or one second. You can change that if you prefer. Let's make these changes. And then last, let's go back over here to the Ethernet IP settings. Since uh, this device is the adapter responding to the scanner that's within your Control Logix PLC, we'll accept these default settings and say submit. We're done. At this point, you can put it into service. However, you do have some, some issues when you're setting this up. We've got some convenient monitoring tools. If you come into system monitoring, you'll find a system status page that gives you a lot of diagnostic information. 
as well as a, a protocol analyzer that lets you see what's happening, including your I.O. data. So yeah, I think you'll find it's very easy to set up and uh, commission, and even if you should have changes you need to come back at it, it makes it very easy to maintain as well. Well, I hope this gives you a better idea of the capabilities of industrial Ethernet gateways, as well as how easy they are to set up. Uh, for more information about this product, as well as other industrial Ethernet solutions, please feel free to contact us or visit our website. And thanks for watching.